Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be taking the charger to the body shop to begin getting all the quarter panels buttoned up on the car. Before I do that, I'm gonna take the Pathfinder. This is my friend's Pathfinder. It's been at my house for quite a while. I'm gonna take it down to the junkyard. He wants a manual transmission out of it. So I'll probably just pull it out for him and then we could just get rid of the rest of the car instead of it sitting over here. Um, the main reason is because the code guy came by and looked at it. So um, that being said, that is one reason why I got the trailer done. Also, I got the trailer done to take the charger down. So let's head down there, get this unloaded, get the charger loaded up. Uh, actually, I wanna do a few things to the charger before I take it over there. Um, I need to pull the door locks and everything for the door latches out of the doors. So when we make the rear doors work, uh, we can line all that stuff up. So Look at this brand new Nissan up here, dog tracking down the road. Man, Nissan's not building them like they used to. What I'm gonna do is unload the Pathfinder and then I need to do some stuff to the charger, get some stuff ready. I wanna pull the Hellcat hood off of it. I just put it on there to make sure, I don't know, I just put it on there to see what it was gonna look like with the headlights and bumper. But I need to pull it off because I don't have a latch and I really don't need it on there anyway and I don't want it to get damaged. Just finished loading up the charger. I have the trunk and all the stuff in the back of the truck. I have the uh, the piece of inner structure that I'm just gonna trace for the wide body. I also have the wide body core panels in here. So we are ready to head out. I'm gonna close the shop up and then head over to the body shop, drop this thing off and uh, kind of go from there. Finished loading up the charger. I have the trunk and all the stuff in the back of the truck. I have the uh, the piece of inner structure that I'm just gonna trace for the wide body. I also have the wide body core panels in here. So we are ready to head out. I'm gonna close the shop up. loaded the charger and everything went very very well we pushed it into the shop now what I'm gonna do is go home and 3d print the new emblem for the car so I've been thinking about this for quite some time I think I'm gonna leave it to you guys to decide what the name of it is though I have two options I ordered this 3d printer link will be in the description this is actually a very large 3d printer which I needed a very big one because I didn't want to print intake manifold flanges and exhaust manifold flanges before I mock them up in multiple pieces. So that thing's actually packaged very nice. So there's, pro there's a little bit of assembly, but it's uh, pretty heavy, but the packaging on this thing is just crazy how intricate it is. I mean, I've never seen something packaged so well. So let's get it out of the box, get it set up, and then, I'm gonna print you guys a surprise. All right, for the most part, it is now set up. This thing is pretty big. Here's my hand, and it doesn't really give you much of an idea how big the build area is, but here's a K-series intake manifold, and it fits right on there. So it's, uh, and you can see how much more build area there is. The good thing about this, I haven't really tried it. That's why I bought it. This is a Chinese 3D printer. It was like 400-ish dollars, which it's supposed to have auto leveling. I still need to do it. Um, add that, that's auto leveling. It's now auto leveling. Look at that. Man, it's like a CNC machine. This is tight. Now that it has auto leveled the bed, I'm gonna do a test print just to make sure everything is good to go. And then after that, I can hook it up to my computer and do the first print. Did the first test print and the nozzle is actually too high. So it has this really nice feature. These are all the points that it probed previously and I can either select one or all of them. It seemed perfectly level, but it was just too high. So I'm redoing the test print and as it's printing, I'm gonna adjust it 
down until it is that perfect height. You can see it's way too high right there. Test print just finished and you can see right here, when I started it was about two and a half mils too high, so it wasn't really adhering. Then I started to adjust it down and then I adjusted it too far and you can see it started to wipe right there. So that's too low. So then I went back up and now we're at our, we are at a perfect height and uh, ready to actually print something. So I'm gonna slice it up on my computer over there and uh, we're gonna get something printed really quick after I pull all this stuff off. And I really like this bed that they have because it's like a, I don't know, it's like perforated. So you don't actually have to, once it starts to cool down, the parts just pop off of it, which is really nice. I am now back home from dropping the charger off at the body shop and everything is now over there, which I'm really, really excited about because now tomorrow I can start fitting all the quarter panels, get all of that stuff, moving forward. So a lot of people were wondering on my Instagram, why am I taking it to a body shop? Am I having a body shop? Am I, is it out of my skill set? Um, the reason I'm taking it over there is I don't have all the required tools. I don't have a spot welder. I don't have all the seam stuff. So I don't want to buy all those tools, wait for them to come, push this project really far out. And I also don't want to pay for all those tools. So I know a guy that has a body shop. I'm also going to pay him for using his tools, but what I'm gonna do is do all the work over there, have all the tools that I need. If I need any help, he is very, he builds a lot of hot rods. He knows the ins and outs of sheet metal work. He'll give me some tips if I need them and help me where I need help. So I don't ever have an issue asking for help. But that being said, if he shows me how to do something, that's just adding to my skill set. So it's never, you know, there's never a reason to not ask for help if you don't know how to do something. And if you do get help, then you learn a new skill. So after that, I came home and I have been wanting to talk about the emblem I designed, or actually I, I kind of gave some input to an artist and they designed the, you know, they used my input and what I kind of wanted it to look like and they made, they drew it up and then I put it in SolidWorks and uh, pretty much it came out spot on exactly how I wanted it. So now that the emblem is 3D printed, this thing came out exactly how I wanted and it is really nice to have a 3D printer. So I just bought this 3D printer and the reason I bought it wasn't to do this emblem, but it was nice to test out on the emblem. But this is a very, very large 3D printer. I'm gonna put the link in the description. It's 450 by 450 and 450 tall. So that's a very, very big build plate. And uh, the reason I got it was I designed intake manifolds, I designed this and that, and a lot of the stuff I designed is big, way bigger than this, but it is really nice to be able to design stuff. And uh, if you're new to my channel and don't know about it, I do design a lot of stuff in SolidWorks. I am very, very good at SolidWorks. So I designed this K-Series intake manifold, which I'm going to 3D print and test fit it, make sure everything works, but this is, this is pretty detailed. So. This is gonna be something I'm gonna produce in the next year or so, and uh, hopefully everything works out with it. I just have put a lot of time and effort into it, and I want this thing to be able to handle, you know, I want it to be able to handle over a thousand horsepower on a K-Series. And 
cool it well and everything like that. So I want it to be the whole thing. I don't wanna to have to have somebody take it and have to modify it, anything like that. So a lot of time and effort and thought goes into the stuff I design. But that being said, I did have the artist design the, uh, the emblem and then I put it in SolidWorks so I could 3D print it. And if anybody knows of a company that makes custom billet emblems or composite emblems or something that isn't 3D printed like the one I 3D printed. This thing came out really nice, but at the end of the day, the emblem I want to put on the car, I want it to be very professional. I want it to look very good. And I don't just want a 3D printed emblem that I painted on the car. So I do like that I could hold this thing in my hand and that is the great thing about 3D printers. And it just, it just came out spot on. So what I wanted to accomplish with this emblem is I didn't want to just throw, slap a Hellcat, a elephant, any of those iterations of emblems. I wanted something new. Um, I wanted something kind of new. So the reason I tro chose a gorilla was because Dodge already used the name Rampage. And if anybody knows, you know, there's, there's a movie and it goes into, you know, there's a gorilla and it's Rampage. But that's the whole reason behind me powder coating the calipers, the Brembo calipers, neon green, and then glow in the dark, it's radioactive, stuff like that. So this is the part where the subscribers, I want you to comment in the link or comment below what you think the name of this car should be. Um, uh, or the, yeah, the name of the car. I'm not exactly sure. I'm going in between Rampage and Kong. I told Jose Kong and he was like, yeah, that's the name. I'm really, I'm really kind of going towards that. I really am, I'm split. I, I don't know which one I want. I really want both of them, but I can't have both of them. So the, the thing being, you guys are gonna kind of push me one way or the other. Um, I like both of them a lot, but Rampage or Kong and uh, I, think, I think both names are kind of kind of complement the car just because of what it is. It's a Trackhawk all-wheel drive swapped charger station wagon. It's just a bunch of stuff. And I'm going to end up powder coating the valve covers the same color as the brake calipers, just to kind of bring in the theme of the car. And uh, I want you guys to actually give me some feedback, decide which name you like the most, comment below, and we'll kind of give you subscribers or give my subscribers some, uh, you know, some input into the car and you guys can actually choose something. So I'm just really, really happy that this came out as well as it did. I don't know if everybody's gonna be a fan of this, but I just really like the theme of it. And it's, it's just really nice because I try to keep certain things the same. So it kind of looked like something that Dodge would create as an emblem and uh, just kind of make something that that's the whole point behind this car. It's something Dodge hasn't made and I'm making it to be something as close as something that would come out of the factory. That's, that's really the, the, uh, the reason behind building this car. Um, not just to make the coolest charger wagon out there or the fastest one out there, um, you know, being all wheel drive and with the track of transmission and stuff like that. Now that I've talked about the emblem and we have the charger down at the body shop, Tomorrow, I'm gonna work on the charger and try to get as much as I possibly can done. Hopefully, I can get those pieces of inner structure back on the car, get them modified, everything, so we can get the core panels on the next day. I really want this thing to move forward and move quick. And uh, you know, with the guy helping me and showing me tips and tricks, I think it will be very possible to get this thing in high build by the end of next week. People that have been really waiting and can't really envision what the car's gonna look like, will have a better idea of what it's gonna look like once it's in high build primer. But that being said, comment below what you think the name of the car should be, Kong or Rampage. Click the like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and see you guys next time.